presenting about clean water and its relation to health economics. So clean water has the heart of public health. Imagine a world where clean water isn't just guaranteed. For millions, this is often the reality. And today we're looking at clean water access is crucial, not only for health, but it also boosts economics. Clean water is at the heart of public health. It's essential for preventing diseases, pro promoting hygiene, and sustaining life. But it's something that we often take for granted. In communities without access to clean water, waterborne diseases such as cholera, typhoid, and hepatitis are very, very prevalent. This leaves communities bearing a double burden that is higher health risk and often increased health care costs because often people can afford um, to get health care help whenever they, are, they have diseases such like this because these communities don't really have the help that, that there is needed. Economic implications of water insecurity. Unsafe water sources don't just impact health. They create huge economic barriers. Treating illnesses from contaminated water diverts limited healthcare resources, raising costs significantly. In areas where people must travel long distances to connect, collect water, the economic impacts go beyond healthcare. Lost work hours, missed school days, and often decreased productivity that add up very quickly. Clean water isn't just about health. It's about enabling economic growth and reducing healthcare burden for a lot of these communities. So here's a little picture of like sort of like a ripple effect that causes. So oftentimes what happens is that these people are often having a lot of healthcare issues because of the water that they drink, which results in them being at home a lot of these times. And because these communities don't really have a lot of exposure to um, get help that is needed, they're often in, you know, at home losing a lot on productivity and in these areas they rely a lot on agriculture and sort of means of being able to work in the community that is sort of the way that they make money and not really through corporate entities so it really makes a problem in those cases. Cost effectiveness of clean water infrastructure. Health economics teaches us that prevention is far more affor of affordable than treatment. Investing in clean water infrastructure, such as filtration systems and sanitation facilities, significantly reduces the incidence of waterborne diseases. For every dollar that's invested in safe water access, several times that amount is saved in healthcare costs. In fact, in low income regions, these investments can reduce healthcare expenses for preventable diseases up to 70%. Clean water access isn't just about moral imperative, but often it's like an economically smart decision for these spaces. Real world success stories in clean water investment. We don't have to look far to see truly see the power of clean water investment because a lot of these countries have already started implementing this. For example, in countries such as Bangladesh, significant investments in water filtration and sanitation has dropped child mortality rates by, sig by a significant percent and lowered healthcare costs for water-related diseases. These efforts have impo in impacted productivity as well. Workers miss few days um, at work and school, and children stay in school longer, uh, um, helping them thrive later in life and help them eventually grow the economic industry that they're in and in these low-income areas. These economic boosts from clean water access reaches every corner of these, uh, of these societies, and in turn, it, it can truly make an impact in the communities that they live in in the long term. Some of the um, policies that have um, effect, like some, of, there are some policies that have gone into effect in order to tackle these issues, and um, some of them, you know, do have a genuine impact. Where some of them are just there so that um, um, government can, you know, say answers to people who are all, like genuinely suffering from these issues. So at that point, here's a choice that we face. We can either continue to deploy the right cost of waterborne diseases, or we can impl Im implement targeted policies in order to tackle it. Um, that make clean water a fundamental part of health in low-income rural areas. Some of the um, policies often include subsidized 
subsidized water filtration systems. This policy funds low-cost filtration systems specifically designed for rural areas where access for large care infrastructure may be limited. For example, Kenya. A portable, um, ha a portable filters have improved water quality in remote, er in remote areas, um, preventing disease at an affordable cost. Subsidizing the filters on a, on a wider scale would provide communities with a reliable access to clean water, reducing the spread of waterborne diseases and lo lowering health care costs. Another policy could possibly include local water management grants, where empowering communities to manage their own water sources is a sustainable solution. For, uh, for offer, by offer, offering grants for community-driven projects like well construction and rainwater harvesting, government can um, support local rural water management. For example, India's National Rur Rural Drinking Water Program, for instance, provides such grants enabling villages to build water resources tailored to their needs. Oftentimes, the, this might not result in the most amount of um, water that they can get, but it's truly a start for a lot of these communities where water is so scarce. So this approach creates self-sustainable solutions for locals that maintain and reduce the de dependency on our, um, external resources, which may also even cost a lot more. Another one can be mandatory healthcare access in schools. Oftentimes in school, we often see the water filtration systems and there's three lights. It's green, it's yellow, and there's red. And when we see red or green, uh, when we see green, yes, it's fine. But when we see yellow and red, there's a moral compass in us which guides us to say, oh, it's fine, we can probably just not be hydrated for a couple of hours. It doesn't matter, it's okay. Let's try to drink like clean water. But a lot for a lot of these communities, this isn't really an option because a lot of times they don't even have water. Right? So a lot of times there's that um, dilemma of, okay, like, like, what are some ways that we can truly, truly give access to these communities? So a lot of times, like, a lot of policies include mandatory clean water access in schools, and it truly does work to an extent, but, but there's still a long way to go in order to really, really make um, this, you know, reach a wider, like, like really make schools have access to this in the future. So um, yeah, schools and clinics often have uh, often the central of rural communities, yet some lack what, uh, clean water access. Simple interventions like rainwater tanks or solar powered purification units could provide essential safe water access in these settings, reducing the risk of disease for students and patients. Requiring clean water for students and patients um, and uh, re uh, requiring clean water in these community hubs would promote better health and also improve everyday hygiene for a lot of these students. So through pro to prioritizing um, policies like this, we're not just uh, addressing just waterborne diseases. In turn, we're actually preventing and securing their health in a way that builds communities for uh, immunity in a long-term impact. Health economics just shows us that safe water access is just one of the most cost-effective in order to improve health and reduce expenses. But each, poli each, each policy that we take or each new policies that we, in fact, take on can, can actually build a stronger clean water access to a lot of these communities. And in turn, you know, it leads us to fewer illnesses, more stronger communities, more stronger economics, and in turn, just building a more resilient community. Um, we can't afford to look at the economics of clean water. Investing is a health decision, an economic decision, and a choice to build a stronger, healthier communities worldwide. By securing access to clean water, we're not just protecting the environment, but we're ensuring the healthier future for a lot of these students. And I believe that it's very important to just look at the bigger picture for a lot of these communities where um, often what we take for granted is not granted and offer very scarce. Um, so I think that it's really an a prevalent issue that we might probably not recognize until a lot of years later. And I think that we should really, really um, start making policies that truly make an impact for all of them. Thank you so much.